Welcome to video number 12 in the professional development series focused on teaching and learning online, specifically on student to student online engagement. In this video, we focus on applying the model and principles to an Australian history unit on World War II for year 10. Our principles for student to student online engagement focus on collaborative inquiry to develop students' self-regulation through cognitive engagement, emotional engagement and behavioural engagement. And there are four principles to direct pedagogy, which are sustained communication, modelling, management and learning design. So we'll have a look at the relationship of this model to practice in this year 10 unit of work. In this unit, students investigate wartime experiences through a study of World War II in depth. This includes a study of the causes, events, outcomes and broader impact of the war as an episode in, war, in world history and the nature of Australia's involvement. For the assessment, students construct a six to 800 word essay in response to the question, to what extent did the use of fear and propaganda by the Nazi party play a role in Hitler's ability to control and maintain power in Nazi Germany? An approach to the learning design for this unit, you could use the functions in teams over the nine weeks. The teacher would design the development of content, then move to group work, develop content further, then introduce more group work, and then an individual focus for essay development with a peer reference group, and then the, the essay exam. In Teams, you can organise all the content in files, create channels for students to work easily together over different timeframes inside and outside of classroom time, and also use the meeting functions if you need synchronous chat. So let's explore the use of group work for student-to-student -student interaction in this unit. During this phase of group work, the students have to analyse in depth one image source related to fear and propaganda in pairs or small groups. As you can see, all the material for this task and the whole unit is on Teams. The different sources are in a folder in the channel Fear and Propaganda in Nazi Germany, which makes it easy to find. The five sections of the units form the channels. Channel 1, Treaty of Versailles and Weimar Republic. Channel number 2, Fear and Propaganda in Nazi Germany. Channel number 3, Crystal Night and Holocaust. Channel number 4, War in the Pacific as the final topic, and then channel five, essay writing development. And you can see in this channel number two are the seven different sources. So students have easy access. Here is one source, the eternal Jew. You can see in this task, students will need to work in their groups to examine an image in order to develop understanding of how the Nazi party used fear and propaganda to main control. So to complete this task, students will need to identify the explicit and implicit elements of the picture, identify the context of the source and explain the impact that this might have on the creation of the source, identify the perspective of the source, explain how the source relates to fear and propaganda, and discuss why this image was used and how successful they think it might have been in the Nazi campaign. Here is an image of a student group answer on source number one, the eternal Jew. This analysis, analysis happens in teams. Students in this group wrote on the poster providing responses to the question. After having completed the analysis task in pairs and small groups, students then need to examine the other image sources and their relevant analysis. There are different ways that this could be organised. The first option is for the students to post all their results in the one channel. Here is an example of the eternal Jew. 
The advantage is that all interaction takes place in Teams. However, since there are a total of seven sources to analyze and now comment on, it makes more sense to open a separate channel for each source. Here you can see the section, second option, which makes more sense for this example. This means that every source has its own channel. In this case, the students must be well instructed so they visit all the channels and comment there. They could be required to make a comment on each with the teacher commenting as a co-participant as well. After commenting, students make summary points in a collaborative document, as you can see here. So if we have a look at what we understand learning design to be, which is engineering student engagement, you could see in that example, there was a lot of work where students were working together through the different sources and having the uh, channels available to them. So it made it easier for them. TPAC, which we talked about in the first set, looked at uh, which tool was chosen for the task. And why Teams was chosen there was that it was an easy system for that asynchronous communication. It also was designed as a learner-centered approach so the students were co-networking co and co-creating and doing that collaborative inquiry around the content. So the dialogue through the text chat um, in a forum style was being developed. Students were working together, annotating imagery and also responding to uh, source documentation. So they were learning together through that dialogic process. The structure was there to support that and it increased that learner autonomy. Thank you.